turn to COBAR. So you founded COBAR with uh, Professor Barzilai. Can you, so what is kind of the mission of COBAR? So COBAR was founded to commercialize mitochondrial peptides uh, for human diseases. And it uh, selected uh, MATSI as the first candidate uh, target and uh, went through hundreds of analogs of MOTC to identify the uh, variant, uh, laboratory developed variant uh, that has the best uh, profile that can be uh, used as a medication and took one of these uh, analogs of MOTC, uh, which happens to be known as 4211, CB4211, and uh, completed uh, preclinical testing in three animal models, uh, demonstrated safety and efficacy, and then initiated a phase 1A and then a phase 1B clinical study in patients um, who are either healthy or have obesity and fatty liver. And they were able to demonstrate uh, the desired physiological effects, uh, including improvements in blood sugar, liver enzymes, and other things. Um, and um, also demonstrated that uh, while there were some minor uh, side effects related to injection site uh, uh, phenomena, uh, the medication was extremely safe and there were no serious side effects. Um, and um, COBAR is currently exploring a uh, phase two study uh, of the MOTSI analog, as well as moving additional mitochondrial microproteins into the clinic. Uh, now, for full disclosure, uh, COBAR is an independent company. I uh, advise them, but they have a tremendous team of scientists, and they uh, have identified uh, new uh, exciting peptides that were not discovered in my lab that they are moving forward towards uh, clinical development. Uh, the lead candidate is uh, one that has uh, excellent uh, results in uh, animal models of idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. And um, it hasn't been uh, uh, declared uh, when uh, they will consider initiating clinical trials, but uh, that is a, a very exciting direction. Yes, yeah, no, that is really exciting. So what, maybe from your lab's point of view, what, what do you see as kind of the next step in, in development of MDPs? So my lab discovered a number of very exciting novel peptides, uh, which are going to be published in the next few years. As I said, by the time your viewers or listeners uh, have access to this podcast, I suspect, uh, as I said, Wednesday, mm -hmm. we'll uh, have released uh, our findings on the peptide we call schmooze, mm -hmm. uh, which I think uh, deserves a close look and potential investment in the context of neurodegeneration of Alzheimer's disease. We have another very exciting peptide that we call Mensch, which we discovered as uh, from the screen for uh, mutations in the mitochondrial DNA that might be involved in the development of diabetes, type 2 diabetes. And we found a mutation in Mexican-Americans. It's only found in Hispanics or Mexican-Americans. And if you have this mutation, particularly if you're also obese, it dramatically increases your risk of diabetes. And that mutation uh, causes a loss of this peptide called Mensch. And that peptide has, uh, I think, tremendous promise in uh, the treatment of diabetes in that particular population. And this brings me to the concept that all of medicine is going to transition the way uh, oncology already has into what's known as precision medicine. Mm -hmm. But that I'm, I'm, I'm referring to the concept that if you had 
uh, high cholesterol, even until today. People throw one single drug on everybody. If you have diabetes, you get a drug, and if that doesn't work, you get another drug. But there's no concept of precision medicine in chronic diseases of aging as of yet. Mm -hmm. Mitochondrial biology and in the future, other discoveries are going to facilitate the development of a precision medicine approach to chronic diseases of aging and perhaps to health span promotion in general. Richard, you and I are similar ages. We're both Caucasian, but I suspect from different parts of Europe. And we have uh, some differences in our genetic makeup, particularly in our mitochondrial DNA. And I suspect that you and I have different variants in our mitochondrial DNA that will impact our health span. And the way to address that is going to be by correcting the specific abnormalities that might be in schmooze and mensch and matzi and schlep too and what have you that are right for you or for me and they're not going to be the same and in the case of diabetes uh 20 to 30 percent of mexican diabetics or mexican american diabetics are going to carry this mutation for example for mensch and um we believe that uh Developing a therapeutic that will address that specifically is a compelling and exciting opportunity in precision medicine. And there are going to be many more examples of that. <music>